Have you ever dreamt of bending animation to your will, like a sort of puppet master with AI strings? Well, buckle up, because motion control has just dropped, and it's bringing us one step closer to making that dream come true. This puppy is still teething, but I couldn't resist taking a peek at what AI animation tools have in store for us. As such, no deep dives into setup today, though you can grab a zero-click installer for Linux if you're a Patreon and like to try this stuff too. If you're not using the installer, all you need to do is create your new virtual environment, then install the requirements exactly like they show. But this isn't just about today, they're changelog whispers of an animate diff future, meaning comfy UI and automatic 11.11 compatibility may be just around the corner. Think smoother workflows and less nerd tears. Take it from your resident AI profit, this isn't dropping in 10 minutes after the video release, but early 2020 is a safe bet. They say seeing is believing, so do check out their project page. It's like a motion buffet with pan, zoom, tilt, and more. As you can see there, we've got the eight basic camera motions, the usual pan up, pan down, and all that sort of stuff. They also offer speed control too, allowing for faster or slower movements. There it is at 0.2, all the way up to two times speed. But that's not all, because you can also bend objects to your will, like this two zebras example. And yes, you can indeed mix and match the two, so you can have both camera and object motion control as well. The rose is swaying in the wind. There you can see the rose, the object is moving, and at the same time, it's also zooming out. The animate diff results are further down. There we can see the usual camera motions, as well as the speed control and the object control as well. Animate diff is definitely the one I'm waiting for. But are these all cherry picked examples? Can it actually do any of this? Let's take a look see, as thankfully they've provided a Gradio app for us to play with. Like they say at the top, this current version is based on LVDM Video Crafter, but you'll get the gist of what's happening here anyway. There are three steps, with the first one being to pick which sort of motion module you want to use. Will it be the camera moving? Will it be the object moving? Or will it be both the camera and the object? I guess as good a place to start as any is with the default they've got there, control the camera poses. If I click proceed, that will take us on to step two. In step two, we can select the camera poses. We've got basic camera poses, provided complex camera poses, or custom camera poses as well. Let's start off with a basic camera pose and proceed just to see what we get here. Like you saw from the project page earlier, this has all the basic camera poses, pan up, pan down, anti-clockwise, zoom out, all that sort of stuff. If we take a look at the complex camera poses, however, this gives us something completely different. Some names we don't really understand, pose one, pose two, what are those? Well, if you click on a pose, let's click pose one for this one, that will update the camera type. And we've also got a visualize camera and proceed. Now, if we click that, that's gonna give us a little thing there and we can see this pose is a sort of S shape. Now you can zoom in out and that and move it around as well if you want. If we click another pose, visualize the camera and proceed there, you can see again, that's an entirely different pose. And the final option here, custom camera poses, select that and click proceed. Here, basically you can mix two together. So you could do a pan up and then a zoom out. Once again, you see the camera type updated there. And then you've got the options of either doing A first and then B or both of them together. I'm gonna do, let's say a pan up and zoom out. That seems good. Visualize that. And then you've got a pan up and zoom out. All righty. Time to move on to step three. We can scroll down and here you see, this is where you add the prompt and generate the video. Obviously the best prompt will include a rodent, meaning we're now ready to click start generation and see what happens. By default, it's going to make three videos, which is very useful for doing comparisons. Though of course that will take a little longer to generate than just one. Thanks to the power of rodent time warping, however, you get to see the results instantly. So if I click play, yes, it does indeed pan up and then zoom out. Let's just do that again. Very nice indeed. 
object trajectories work in much the same way. So if I go back to step one and select control object trajectory, that will give us some options here in step two, similar to moving the camera. But this time we can also go freestyle if we like. Let's take a look at those provided trajectories. We've got horizon, swaying, swaying to, curve, all that sort of thing. And once again, you can, of course, visualize those trajectories to see what your object is going to do. If you go with the custom trajectory, there you get a little canvas for drawing. Now, no, you can't actually draw on it, but instead what you do is lots and lots of little tiny clicks. So if I click all the way around there, and visualize trajectory, you'll see there I've generated my own custom curve. Once again, rodent time warps allow you to see the results instantly. So let's have a quick play on those. And yes, it does indeed have the object pretty much following that trajectory. Now it's a good job we've got three there as they are slightly different and a couple of them have that rather nasty Shutterstock logo. Let's do another generation. This time I've changed the seed to 101 to make sure they're not completely cherry picked here with their default of 1234. And with this new seed, yes, they are doing fairly similar to the curve there. That one's obviously good. The middle one, it's, it's more moving the camera, I think, than the object. And the end one, again, not so much. So that's why it's good to generate those three. Also play around with the seed a little as well, as your mileage may vary. I guess then in this case, the app does indeed do what it says. You can, of course, go back to step one and opt to move both the camera and the object position. If we proceed on that, then essentially it starts off with the camera pose you can visualize camera and proceed. And this time you then also get the custom trajectory thing too. So you can do it that way as well. I for one can't wait until they release the animate diff version, especially as SVD has such a restrictive license. Hopefully all those Shutterstock logos will vanish too as they totally ruin any output. That about wraps it up for this one, but if you want even more nerdy rodent geekery, then do check out this next video.